Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and we're going to be looking at the four brand new URP demos that are in Unity, which include Terminal, Oasis, The Garden, and then the Cockpit, which is a part of VR, which is much harder to show. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a walk through all of the scenes, and I'll show you some of the cool effects where we can sort of transport to the different scenes on the fly, which is really, really cool with custom shader graphs. We'll look at some of the tutorials and other things that Unity have added so they can showcase some of the features that they've added, and I'll go through some stuff that you might find it interesting too. So when you're in Unity Hub, you can click to add a new project and you can go to the sample tab on the left hand side and you will need to download the 3D sample scenes for URP and it will show the little image of the sample scenes in the corner. So this is supposed to work in all versions of 2022 LTS, but I did get a URP issue when I tried to open it in 2022.3.4. So I'm using 3.14, which is the current version of what I'm doing now, and I didn't get any issues then. So maybe there's a slight discrepancy with the previous versions. So you make sure you click the little cloud button to download the project, and then you can just open that up as you would regularly. And then once you open it out in Unity, you will start off in the terminal demo which is a demo which is really about showcasing different materials and you can look at little lighting scenarios for different things in there but these allow you to transport to other places or other scenes and when you open it you will get tutorials and if not there's a tab at the top called tutorials and you can choose the show tutorials and then you can click on them you can learn each about the different scenes and we'll go through those a little bit after i've shown you the little preview it'll have graphical features and they are giving are coming soon to be able to say how to build these out. Do be sure to check out the links to the massive Black Friday sale on the Unity Asset Store and a Humble Bundle that I featured recently, which has over 60 different assets for Unreal and Unity with some amazing stuff. But this being said, you can start playing the game now and you get a nice little demo scene and you can run around this scene as you would normally. It's, it's got nice enough lighting for URP. It's all baked lighting and it does have some variances of decals and area volumes for different post-processing. But we've got various different rooms here. This is to go to the garden demo and this is to the oasis and this is to the VR version. So let me try and show you. So when we walk into here, for the first time it does do a compilation. You can see the cool little effect which they've done in shader graph to actually showcase some of the items of this project to be able to show it off. And you can see that it's just a backdrop and it showcases some of the imagery that's from the other scene. And then we can go to these little plinths here. We can look at it and you can see we're almost exiting this world and moving and loading into the other. We have to give it a second to get all the shaders ready and everything because we may drop a few frames at the start, which is supported for a lower end type version. This does have custom lighting, custom particles, and you can see the um, stylistic water effects and loads of really nice stuff in this scene. And now if we go back through this Japanese inspired garden, and then we can then transport back to our original scene, as you can see it in the preview there, which I think is quite cool, like little portals to somewhere else. And we can see we morph out, we can exit this. Then I will give you a look of the VR scene, which you can see here. This goes to a custom scene, which has custom lighting and other things specifically for VR because it's supported in a much different way. You can see if we did have a headset, we'd be able to look out much more easily, but we can still look out of this ship and get a cool visual of this and hopefully well, we can't really control it. It looks like it's on a path anyway. And then if we want to exit back into our previous scene, you can just look at the Unity icon again and we teleport back. One of the coolest demos is the Oasis demo, which is actually the most high performance demo, which is a sort of desert oasis scene that showcases some of the most advanced features of URP, which haven't been necessarily shown off before. So it's got much more high detailed rendering effects high quality details, better textures, better lighting, more custom water. As you can see over in this scene, there's a nice example with a much more high detailed scene, only small, but it's just got differences and you can see the different lighting and the post processing. I'm guessing it must be some eye adaption to change when we go into a really dark area. Some nice props and assets in here. And I think it's a great way to check out some of the different demos and things like that. 
Now we'll go through some of the presentation. You can see here that before you start, it'll teach you about project settings and quality. If you can't reach the quality that you desire, if you can hear PC struggling a little bit, you can knock those down. And then it just shows that it does have controller and keyboard and mouse support because it has got the standard assets character controller in there. So then we can have a look at the terminal demo and you'll be able to see it as we cycle around this scene. Then this had some inspiration for modern museums, airports and other architectural designs and it uses fully physically based materials and GPU light mapper to offer realistic lighting. As you can see in here, it does have baked lighting. As you can see, it uses the mixed lighting option with baked global illumination with a shadow mask with not massively high settings, and it's about 16 megabytes in size, so fairly modest for a reasonable size of quality. So the main purpose of this main platform was to look and bring in your assets import new assets in here and get an idea of how they should look and do they look right in this lighting scenario. And then as it says, this is a ramp here for three different rooms that you can check out. Then we've got the garden, which is a more stylized environment, which includes loads of stylized rendering with different organic and more painted style aesthetic than the previous scene as that went for more of a realistic, just minimalistic style. You can look at the courtyard and the nocturnal area and the specific style that they've created for this. The environment is built out for various platforms and it scales for mobile devices thanks to baked lighting and the extensive level of details that they use in this scene. It actually includes modular architectural pieces which rely just on the default lit shade. So there's no special custom shaders in here, but you can see most of the assets do come with at least two or three LODs to really increase performance across here. So there is a vegetation that's nicely crafted as you can see here and all the vegetation is crafted in speed tree and there's interconnected interiors and the gentle water stream and then there's various decals as you can see here and this cool looking stream which is being created that you could use in your own actual games too. The whole scene does take advantage of Unity's new forward plus rendering, which allows you to add more point lights into the scene without a massive drawback instead of using deferred lighting if you need to and want to focus on a mobile environment. Then we've got the Oasis, which you can see here, which is a peaceful style Oasis with much higher resolution in everything that you can see. It's targeted for handheld consoles and higher end devices with use of more complex shader graphs for the sand, as you can see for the tessellation of the sand, the nice looking pool and water, and then the distance fog that we see, and then the other style of vegetation which uses lots of custom shaders in Speed Tree 2. And as you can see that this scene here also uses the baked lighting, which is about 42 megabytes, and it has its own custom lighting preset with actual higher baking parameters on here. And it's all split out nicely into Shaw, Dunes and Paths. And then last but not least is the cockpit demo, which is more of an on rails experience which you can show, you can jump into this. It's fully stylized on a roller coaster style environment where you can't actually go off, but you can look around if you're using VR. It's designed to run at very high frame rates with very minimal post-processing, just so that you can keep the flexibility to be able to play on those devices. So I just thought, like I said, I would go into some of the features that you can see here and how the scene is built up. With the terminal demo, you can see here, it's very simple. Other than we've got water around the edge here, which uses a custom shader graph example. You can set the different parameters with a normal reflection and the edge color. We have actually got decal projectors, which can place decals onto bits of geometry. As you can see here, it applies the little sort of dirt and smudging to the different areas. And you can see there's grime decals all over. It's got custom collisions around, so you can jump out anywhere else. You can see with the lighting, it does have reflection probes for each room. As you can see in one of the rooms which you teleport to, it's got a reflection probe for the entire room and then for the top just to get a variation and you can see that these reflection probes are baked it does have some quite large point lights for these areas it does use baked point lights and other spotlights and baked area lights if you see i move into this area here and you can see there's some area lights in the top which add to the ambience of this specific area these green parts are volumes for post processing so when you walk into it you get a different post exposure as you can see from the different ones on the right hand side. 
And then we've got light probe groups for any real time objects, which will take the baking data into each of these points. And when any of the objects is near to this, it will actually take that lighting into account. Now, if we take a look at the Oasis scene, there's some more decal projectors. So you can see that there's custom decals for the sand to add just some variation to make it look like the sand has spilled over some of the cloth and the other objects. For the prefabs, like some of this cloth and stuff here, they're just using some textures on some low level geometry. They've got some nice gold looking items which I'll use just the PBR workflow for basic things. And then we can check out the water, which is a very similar water to the one that you saw in the terminal, which has the same level of effects, but you can set different effects like this edge fade. So you can see how far the edge comes along. You can set that how deep or colored the edge actually is. And then you can set the overall look and visuals of the look of the color and how deep the water should look at any point. As we looked at before, we can open out this vegetation and depending on where the vegetation is actually created for, but we can look around this shoreline and we can open it out and you can look at some of the trees and you can see that they all feature level of detail models and they all have their own custom collision. And as it said in the demo, it was all created in Speedtree with various different resolutions. And all of these assets are fully static, so they're taken into the light baking. They have materials for the bark, which is a custom shader graph for the vegetation materials. This one, in comparison, does use a directional light with mixed lighting. And it does use a lens flare for SRP to get that look of when we look towards the sun, we get that lens flare in the scene. And it does use a bunch of light probes, reflection probes, and giant outdoor volume for this entire area to actually incorporate bloom. So we get that look, we get some color adjustments for post exposure to make it look a little bit brighter. And then we get a volumetric fog component. So as you can see in the very background over here, when I lift that up, you can see that in the background there too. And I think that's a really nice component to actually have for any game. And then we've also got some Oasis fog as well. Now the last scene to look at is the Oasis scene and includes various vegetation, just like the Oasis scene with bunches of LODs with the custom shader graph for the different vegetation. It comes with its own decals all around. As you can see, if we grab one of these decal projectors and you can see that it adds cool, nice little flowers just to add variation to the different areas around the scene. We do have that custom water mesh with custom particles, as you can see here with the little spray that comes off. The lighting is much heavily built out in this scene because you can see it still uses the baked GI with the shadow map. The settings are cranked up massively, 132 megabyte shadow map for this environment to make the lighting much more performant so you don't have to rely on any real time lights in any case. It does have a directional light fully baked with reflection probes, which are all fully baked too. Then there is a light probe group for the different areas. So we'll make sure that we get that if we have any real time lights. And then we've got a bunch of interior prop lights and other things with different spotlights and then other area lights in areas where you might have a light which doesn't need to necessarily cast. Area lights are only supported as baked lights usually and then little lights for ambience in these ones here so we can still cast shadows in real time by them being mixed. And then this one again does feature giant volumes for the entire environment and for different areas too, focus on bloom, lifting the look of the gamma and color adjustments to give you more of a darkened and a softer look to the lighting in general with this being more of a mellow stylized scene. So I think these are great because you can check out a load of bunch of custom shader graphs, custom shaders, loads of fog effects, ways to test out some of your assets, get some assets for yourself if you like any of these, even some of the water shaders and other stuff that you can extract and learn from. But I think there are a great set of examples of how to do your lighting and how they've been set up in a real world examples, I guess, for games and being able to support multiple platforms too, especially with the little tutorials that you see in the corner. So I hope you like this little in-depth look at the features and the different assets that are used in these scenes. Do let me know what you think. Come and check out my Patreon to get access to over 205 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else and check out all the Black Friday deals along with a big humble bundle which includes loads of Unity and Unreal assets. That's the best bundle I've ever seen. 
Big thanks to all my patrons. Massive thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.